Hey, welcome back to Green Pastures Online Devotional. Hope this finds you all safe and well this morning, wherever you are. Um, this is week three of our online devotionals. If you know what day it is, you're doing better than me. They're all blurring into one, aren't they, at the minute? Um, but I just have really been um, continuing on with the thought of how are you seeing things? How am I seeing things? How am I looking at what's going on in the world around me, in the world around us? What is my perspective on all of this? Um, and this week I have uh, I've definitely, my perspective has changed and here's what's been happening a bit with my perspective. Excuse me, I'm scary, no glasses on. But my perspective has gone a wee bit like this, this week. I hope I'm not alone with this. Let me let me describe what this is like. I would say this week my vision has been a bit tinted. It's been tinted. I would also describe this. These these glasses aren't my proper prescription. So what I'm seeing is blurry. It's out of focus. It's tinted. It's not clear. It's a bit blurry. That's what that's what these glasses are doing to my vision and doing to my perspective so what is that what's causing that and i would say for me this week it's it's emotion emotions are affecting my perspective and how i am seeing um what's going on around me what kind of emotions well let's list them out together again hope i'm not alone with this but anyone experiencing fear sadness worry confusion questions maybe it's maybe for you it's boredom anger, frustration, maybe it's loneliness or exhaustion, emotions, cloud, tint, blur our vision, blur what's really going on, blur what God is doing. And for me, it's been like having a pair of these tinted sunglasses on. They're not my right prescription. I can't see clearly and it's tainting everything. It's not the right colour. It's not the way things are meant to be seen. What emotions are clouding your perspective? What is, what's clouding how you really see things going on around you this week and all the reports and all the new stuff that we are watching. Maybe what's going on in your own home or with your own family. How are you seeing things this week? There's someone in the Bible who wrote about seeing maybe just a bit like that and it's Paul um, writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and a passage that's so well known because it talks about love. But here's what it says right at the end in verse 12 and this is in the message version. We don't yet see things clearly. We don't yet see things clearly. And in some versions it says we see in a mirror dimly. It's like we're seeing in a in a, a blurry, unfocused mirror. Or maybe it's like seeing through those sunglasses that are tinted, that aren't our right prescription. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. And here's verse 13. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us towards that consummation. Here they are. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is love. So there's the three things that Paul points out for us to help us clear our vision, to help lead us towards seeing things perfectly, seeing things with a clear sight. Here's what they are, faith. So how do we develop faith? Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Again, let's get into the word of God. I have found so much comfort. See, for all those emotions, there's a balm of comfort in the word of God. I have found the balm of comfort in the Psalms this week. Get into the word of God. Develop that faith because faith comes by hearing. You have to hear it for yourself. Get the word of God applied to your heart, applied to your emotions, applied to to what is going on in your family and around you and see what God will do with that faith. See what happens when you apply that faith to your sight. Hope. Here's the second thing that Paul mentions there is hope. 
and he talks about hope unswervingly. So what does that look like when things around us are really tough? How do we hope unswervingly in the face of difficulties, in the face of illness, in the face of financial struggles? How do we hope unswervingly? Hope in the Bible is not what the world looks at hope like. Hope's not wishful thinking. That's, that's what the world's turned it into. Well, well, hopefully, we'll maybe make it. Hopefully this, hopefully that. Hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is the confident expectation that God has the best. It's a confident expectation. And I know no matter what report is written over my life or over the life of people around me that I love, I believe that God is working all of that out for the best. I have a confident expectation of my Father God that he already has it worked out. He is working it out for the good. That is what hope is. And we need hope. See, without hope, we will really struggle. Maintain hope. Build hope. Read about hope in the Word of God and exercise hope and see what it does to your vision this week. And here's the third thing, love. And not just normal love, not just a hug round the shoulder, not just, not just the world's version of love. Here's what Paul says to do, love extravagantly. What a challenge. This week and in the situation we find ourselves in, in this lockdown, how, how can we love extravagantly? Can I challenge you this week? Look out beyond your own circumstance and your own situation and work out ways to love extravagantly. Look beyond your own circumstance to someone else you can reach out to, to your neighbour, to your family, to your friends. Send that text message, make that phone call, Use a delivery service to get some food round to that person who's maybe not feeling well. Love extravagantly. Go out of your way to show love and kindness this week. See what that does to your perspective. See what that does to your vision in the middle of all this. Do you know what? First of all, with that kind of love, you need to know tonight how loved you are, how extravagantly loved you are. Maybe you're not a child of God and you're watching these devotionals and they're giving you a bit of hope or a bit of encouragement for the day. Can I tell you right now, you are so, so extravagantly loved that God sent his only son to die for you, to take your place. You are so extravagantly loved today. Don't let anyone tell you you're not. Don't let anyone look down on you. Don't let anyone tell you you are worthless. You are extravagantly, extravagantly loved today, no matter where you are and where you're listening to this, you are so loved. And when you know that kind of love, when you've experienced that kind of extravagant love for yourself, then you'll be able to give it. So this week, I challenge you, see what those three things do to help your vision because they've helped mine, they've helped me take off um, some of the tint that I've been seeing things through. They've helped me deal with some of my emotions that I've built up around me. And here's finally just three really practical things. If you've got these on, if emotions are overtaking your vision and your perspective and you're finding it really difficult, here's three really practical things can I encourage you to do. First of all, take time out yourself. I've had to do that this week. Go and find a quiet room somewhere. Go and say to the family, to the kids, just give mommy five minutes. Just give me five minutes. Go and take some time for yourself. Calm your thoughts. Just be quiet. Just take a rest. Just put your head on the pillow. Take some time out. That can really, really help. Second thing I've done this week, phone someone else. Phone someone else and talk to them about how you're feeling. Describe it run it past them. I have had to do that. I've done that this week with my sister and with my best friend. Here's how I'm feeling about this situation. Am I right? Am I imagining it? What do you think? Get some feedback. Talk to someone. Let yourself hear yourself. Talk those things out and see, see how that shifts. I guarantee you. Share the burden. Share the burden and it will lift. And here's the third and final and most important thing. Confess these emotions to God. Take them to God and say, do you know what, God? I'm so tired. See what God says back to you. I'll give you rest. That's a promise in his word. 
I will give you rest. If you're weary, if you're burdened, God wants to lift that burden and that weariness off you today. Confess those emotions to God. I'm scared. I'm lonely. I'm confused. Confess those to God and see what he does with them when you bring them to him because there'll be a great exchange in that confession um, if you take them to him this week. So quickly, let's pray um, as we close. So Father, um, I thank you for that great exchange. I thank you um, first and foremost, the great exchange that you made for us, the price that you paid, that you would lay down your life. Um, and Father, I thank you that you're doing that right now. God, for people who are watching this, God, for the first time, God, you you have laid down your life for people um, who need to step into that, God, who need to accept salvation for the first time. God, you're doing that day and daily um, in our wee country, Father, and we're so thankful for that. Um, yeah, God, so I pray um, just that you would help us to walk in hope, to walk in love. Father, would you help us to um, see things the way you see them this week, God? Would we take off um, the emotions that are clouding our sight? And God, would we put on faith and trust and hope and love and see things the way you see them? So God, we, we give it all over to you. We give all our emotions over to you, God. And we're thankful for the gift of prayer where we can have this great exchange, God, where we can have this conversation. God, I know that you're speaking. I know that you'll encourage this week. And I know that you will help carry the burden, um, Father, that's on some of your people listening to this today. Um, so we're so grateful. We just tell you that we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.